Welcome to It Is What It Is. I'm Sean Marie. How is everybody doing on this amazing Sunday? Okay. <clears throat> so today we are going to talk about some lesbians. And I didn't know about these two ladies until I watched a show on Amazon. So I figured, what the hell? I didn't really know about it, so I figured not a lot of people must, but then again, I don't know. So we'll just go through it. Um, well, the first person I'll tell you about... Okay, before we tell the story, I guess I should say why I liked it. I didn't like it. I guess I should, for one, I should watch what I say. I didn't like it. <laughs> I guess what drew me, there we go, what drew me to it is that this is my biggest fear ever. People that these ladies worked at an old folks home and that plays into like, well, that's like the whole thing, but they worked in an old folks home and my biggest fear when my grandma got sick and went into like a home or whatever was bitches like this and the way that they... I'm not saying it's like that now. Hopefully it's not. But like I know. Personally know girls that I don't like. That like work at old folks homes. And they're like. Mm, I just get dicked down at night. And I'm like what girl you're supposed to be taking care of them old people. You know. So if you work at old ho folks home. And you take care of the elderly. Don't use that time to hurt them. Bone. Or anything. No boning. No fucking affairs, no nothing. You take care of those sweet old people, like their family pays for, and you don't hurt old people. Old people and children, for some reason, make me so mad. You can be like, oh, that 20-year-old died, and I'm like, oh, RIP, that's so sad. But you tell me your 80-year-old grandma got killed, and I'm going to get angry. For some reason, children and old people are just so dang precious. Obviously, everybody matters, but, like, I'm just saying, on my list of, like, sadness is old people and kids. Kids, because, like, they haven't started a life. And old people, they've lived so long, and especially when they get taken out in shitty ways. So when they, I guess I should correct myself, because when you die old in a shitty way, it makes me mad. If you die old and you just die because it's your time to go... I feel at peace with your death because you obviously lived a very long, luscious life. So I guess I should say that. But that's why this makes me so mad. These old people, yes, they were old, but they were not ready to go. Like it wasn't truly their time to go. And they weren't even that old. So I guess I should tell you what these two horrible bitches did before I just go on little tangents. Just uh, old people. I fucking love them. Okay. <clears throat> just this name alone lets you know that this chick is bad news. And I'm just kidding when I say that, but her name's just so old school. Okay, so Gwendolyn Gale Graham, a.k.a. Gwen, was born on August 6, 1963. She was raised by her father on a farm in Texas, and her daddy didn't hide nothing from her. And he forced her to watch, like, the exorcism, the exorcism, Jesus, the execution of the chickens, the piggies, anything that died, she had to watch it die. If she refused and, like, tried to not watch it happen, she would get punished really bad. So she grew up with just, like, he wasn't the nicest of men, so very stern, like, she wasn't loved I can't say she wasn't loved but she wasn't shown love like we show love like normal people show love that's it was very cold love um so yeah she was raised in Texas until her mid-teens and then she moved away and she moved to Michigan and when she moves to Michigan she meets another lady and this despisable woman's name is Kathleen May Wood Born on March 7th, 1962. 
people, some people would say that her mother loved her cats and animals more than she loved her. When she was a young girl, she started telling her mom that she, well, to start out with, when she was a young girl, she was bigger than other girls, like more statuesque, you know, she was just broad. That's what I should say, broad. She was broad. And so she was bigger than other girls her age. And so she told her mom that she had a boyfriend named David and like she always went to David's house and always hung out with David and like her mom was like, oh, she's normal, I guess, whatever. Well, one day, Mommy Dearest goes to go pick her up and she's like, hi, mom of David, where's David? Like, I want to see what David looks like. And the mom's like, um, no, there's no David, but there's like a Dee Dee and I'm making these names up. I don't know if the name was David or not. But, and the mom's like, no, there's no David. There's like a Dee Dee, right? And so her mom's like, oh, you're a fucking lesbian. And she tells her, she tells her, she's like, dude, if you don't fucking stop this nonsense, I'm going to send you to a fucking insane asylum until this shit gets worked out of you. Like you are not going to be a lesbian in my house. You're not. And so, um, that was like super, super life-changing for her and so then she everybody says that she was like a manipulator a liar she was just ethnically or is that the right word I'm looking for I don't know but like she had no I call them standards about myself, obviously, because I don't like big words. But, like, yeah, she had no standards. She would lie to get what she wanted. She, w If she saw you and she thought that she could use you for something, you were going to be used. And so she sought out the weaker people around her. So... Anyway, she meets this guy named Ken, okay? They get to know each other. They start boning because she used sexuality to get a lot of things in life and to pave her pave her way. Um, so 14 months later, her and Ken have a daughter together. She starts working at a nursing home, okay? And at this nursing home is when these two women meet. They are American serial killers, okay? They're convicted of killing five elderly women in Walker, Michigan, a suburb of Grand Rapids. In 1987, they committed their crimes at Alpine Manor, the nursing home, where they were nursing aides. So, according to Wood, so this is according to Kathy, is what they call her. No one calls her Kathleen, except for probably people when she's in trouble, people call her Kathy. She gives her account. So what happens is her and David, okay, get married, whatever. They're living this life. Well, then Kathy goes to go to work. And at this old folks home happens to be very popular place for women who enjoy each other's company sexually. I'm not going to say they were all lesbians because they weren't, but women who enjoyed women and had that time, well, they used this old folks home to hook up. So they would, it was like a bunch of women on women in different rooms. Everybody knew they would go and hang out at a lesbian bar after work. And so while um, Kathy's out one night and she's like, uns, 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 right? In the everything else, she looks over and out of her corner eye, she spots Gwendolyn, Gwen. And she's like, I'm going to hit that. Well, they don't. They actually start out just friends and they're like friendly. And then, of course, that friendship involves into knowing about each other. And, of course, the story about when. Kathy was little comes out so now and Gwen's always been a lesbian it's been openly known her whole entire existence that she was going to be a lesbian from what they say this is all from interviews and everything else about people talking about her so to be honest I don't know if she was always a lesbian but 
That's what they say about her. So anyway, so according to Graham, and the reason why we find this out is because Kathy opens her mouth to Ken and sorry, not Graham, Ken, and says one night she's like her and Gwen are fighting. And so she goes to Ken's house and she's like, so I need to stay here. This is what happened. Me and Kathy, I mean, me and Gwen have been killing people. It's all Gwen. I don't want to do it. I'm scared. Blah, blah, blah. It's a sick sexual game. And she tells him all this shit, right? Well, then 14 months go by. 14 whole months. Okay. That's like a year and some change. And all of a sudden, out of the fucking blue, Ken goes to the cops and he's like, so my conscience won't let me hold this in anymore. I need to get this off my chest. I don't feel right knowing about these murders without saying anything because these deaths did, it did like at the old folks home, people were like, damn, people be dying all the time, but the, it was an old folks home. So they were like, RIP, but like y'all dropping in a week. So it was weird, but it wasn't so weird. You know what I mean? It wasn't like people were like, oh, people are getting murdered. It didn't look like they were dying of murder. So people were just like, it is not a, the week to be an old person. They're dropping like flies. And so he holds on to this information for a year and some change. And he says it's his conscience that leads him to the police. But really, Kathy's like, that motherfucker just got mad because I wouldn't dick him down. We may never know. But that's what she says. So she go, the cops go and they're like, okay, well, we need to verify this story through you, obviously, because you're the one being called a killer. And your old man says this, this is what he said. And so they lay out what he says and they go to her and she's like, no. All of that was a lie. It didn't happen. And then the cops make up some shit and they're like, oh, well, we have this evidence and this evidence. And so then Kathy is like, blah, and she spills the beans. So she says, January 19th, 1987, that Gwen entered a room of a woman who had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's and smothered her with a washcloth and Wood acted as the lookout. Kathy. The women, um, the women were chosen that would not fight back. And so they did this in pairs. They would, she, one, one would watch and the other one would do the crime. And this way it would look natural when autopsies would, would be performed. It would just look like they passed in their sleep. Um, Kathy claimed that Gwen murdered the patient to relieve her, to relieve her from the pain and the suffering and everything she was going through. So some people call them like the angels of death or like the angels of mercy or some shit like that. So I don't believe that. Um, they were doing it and through making a, I guess like a love bond, they were in bed one night because after Kathy gave up literally everything to be with Gwen, her family, her kid, the whole spill, just like F you moved into an apartment together. And when they do that, it turns into an episode of the L word and lesbian sex all day over day. And so when they're in bed one night, I guess this is like this plant, this game is hatched and they're like, okay, well... We're going to murder people, old people, take them out of their misery, but we're going to do it to where it spells murder. Like, you know, the spelling out of murder, the M-U-R-D-E-R, -E like murder. So um, that's what they said, that they're going to make like this pact. And it was a love pact. So over the next few months at the old folks home, they murdered four more people, so a total of five. Many of the victims, their ranges go from 65 to 95, and they suffered from diseases and stuff like Alzheimer's and stuff like that. And really, people that just 
weren't able to stand up for themselves really like they went after the weak and it it's so it's just uh, so fucked up so they tried to do the game that spelling of murder and it became more difficult because they just wanted to murder so they come up with a phrase instead Okay, because we can't do murder because when we say we're going to spell out murder, we now we have to wait for people that have those initials, obviously, to spell out that name, spell it out. So we don't want to wait anymore because now every time we've done this, we either go into the other room opposite of whatever happened and we fuck real quick or we do this and then we would play little fucking get your twat wet games all day and then we go home and we bone over the death of that person they would smother them with the white cloth and then like bathe them and shit and put them to bed so it was like this whole thing there was like a whole thing to it it was all sexually motivated and like just turned into this really sick ass game between these two women and so the phrase that they come up with is I'll love you forever and a day. So like when they kill someone, it's like, I'll love you forever in one day. And then number two, I'll love you forever in two days. So, um, a poem that Kathy wrote to Gwen and that they read through the trial said, I will, you'll be mine forever in five days. Kathy also testified that Graham took souvenirs from the victims, keeping them um, for as souvenirs so that they would always have something and like something to bring in like into the bedroom and be like smexual with it, you know? So like whether it's like wearing a bracelet and then being like, ooh, that's her bracelet, kiss the wrist, whatever, fucking weird shit like that. So, um, it's weird, huh? So Kathy portrayed Graham as being, I mean, Gwen, sorry, her last name. I just Google, I mean, not Google, um, Wikipedia goes off their last names. So sometimes when I copy and paste, I for I don't get all the names fixed. So anyway, so Kathy says that Gwen is like the more sexual and physically dominant one and more emotionally dominant in their relationship and she's just like whatever I'm not really a lesbian but I am a lesbian but like this is like my first relationship I'm just here to get my knocks off and like Gwen is like a legit lesbian and so She's like, she's obviously way more aggressive than I am because she's a real lesbian and I'm just like a part-time lesbian because I just barely got to the party. So that's what her story is. Is like she was just overcome by this person who had all this experience and knowledge and capability of just overpowering her and controlling her. So they break up. <laughs> I know because Gwen, this, according to Kathy, horrible person who just has all this anger and power and control, Gwen's like, damn, y'all see that new bitch that just started working here? So she left her. She left Kathy for a new girl that started working at the old folks home. Well, then that girl decides that like they obviously decide like we want to have a relationship. So they moved to Texas back to Gwen's hometown. So more salt in Kathy's wounds, right? Cause Kathy was super mad when they broke up and so, and super jealous. And so not only did Gwen leave her for another woman, but she moved her to her hometown, like even more of a horrible diss to her. But when they moved to Texas, right? They went to work at a hospital taking care of infants. Mind you, this is one of the women who killed old ladies for sexual gratification and happy times. So the murder investigation started in 1988 after her husband, like I said, went to the police and told the police about what Kathy had said. And so when they go, like I said, they go to Kathy. Kathy's like, no, that can't be... So they're like, okay, well, maybe we can go to the bodies. And so they go and two of them have been um, cremated 
And so they couldn't do anything. So the coroner ruled the remaining deaths a homicide. Based on their interview with Kathy, they had an issue. Uh, uh, they issued, they didn't have an issue. They issued a warrant for both of them to be arrested, Kathy and Gwen. So on December 4th and 4th and 5th, those two days of 1988, Graham and Wood were taken into custody and arrested and charged with two of the murders. Um, Kathy was in her in the same in the same state that she, the murders the crime occurred in, and Kathy was in Texas. So Michigan, by the way. Um, during the trial, Kathy got a plea deal. Because she needed to be, she needed to testify against Gwen, or else they wouldn't have anything to take Gwen to jail for. And so she turned state evidence, right? And she said that it was all Gwen, and like she was the watch out, and Gwen did it because of her fucked up past with her dad and watching all the murders, and so like she was the one who was mind fucked. Mind you, this whole time Gwen is like this is a mind game of a jealous ex-girlfriend she made all this shit up I worked there yeah there was death happened she may have killed him she probably did it I didn't do anything I'm innocent of all this until this very day she still says she's innocent and so even the jury was like okay well maybe this is just a fucking jealous lover talking shit right well then they have Gwen's girlfriend that she left Kathy for, the one that moved to Texas. She comes into court and testifies and she's like, nope, mm -mm. we were drunk one night and she told me. So it's true, right? So it was uh, horrible because not only did like, not only is she saying, not only did she ruin this poor girl, like, to be honest, when you put them next to each other and you hear the people who know these women describe them, you get the feeling and you get the idea in the picture the, that Gwen is not as quick as Kathy. And you can tell by the way that Kathy is described by everyone. Even in the show, one of the cops said that talking to Kathy was like talking to a shadow. Like that says a lot about you. And so, and Gwen was like very manipulative, like, I'm not going to say, yeah, gullible. Okay. Gullible in a way. Like she just, she just really wasn't as quick with it as Kathy was. And so it's just super sad. Like, and you never know, really. Like, we'll never really know because Gwen truly says and stands by her word that she, that Kathy's fucking crazy and none of this happened. And that she is sitting in jail because that's where Kathy wants her to be. And that she's going to sit in jail until the day that Kathy's like, okay, I'm done. I lied. JK. And she'll be, she believes at that time she'll be released. On November 3rd, 1989, Kathy was found guilty of five counts. I mean, not sorry, not Kathy. Gwen was found guilty of all five counts of murder against her and one count of conspiracy to commit murder and given five life sentences. Five. She has five life sentences to do. She is housed in a housing facility in a woman's housing facility in Michigan. Kathy was charged with one count of second degree murder and one count of conspiracy to commit murder. And she was sentenced to 20 years on each count, but eligible for eligible for parole March 2nd, 2005. She had been incarcerated in a minimum security federal lockdown in Florida. Well, she goes up for parole, right? And, um, 
you can watch her parole hearing. It's not her parole hearing. It's the hearing afterward because I guess nobody was informed of her parole. So the family didn't have a chance to fight it. They really believed that it was just at a time where they were trying to lessen the inmate how inmate numbers and so they were just paroling people and so during this you get the ch a chance to watch all of the family members of course say their piece and say how they don't want her to have the parole and that she is a threat to society and that she's manipulative and that they fear for anyone that dies around her for, that will ever, forever and always be questioned because she's such a horrible person is what they all say. What makes me so mad at these things is like, for instance, okay, one family member goes up there and she goes, well, I didn't even get told that there was going to be anything that would happen with her release. So I didn't know that I needed to stop that process. And her fucking lawyer, and I know it's his job, and I understand that because if obviously if I was a lawyer, I'd get paid to do the same shit. But he's like, well, did you register as a victim? Did you do this? Did you do that? Did you move? Or all this shit, right? And she's like, well, no, no, no one told me I had to. No, nobody told me I had to. In honesty, it's like, Say my mom is murdered, okay? She's a murdered. Is someone going to hand me a handbook that says what to do when your mom is murdered? Like, who in the fuck would know as a person of a crime like that to go and put yourself on a list as a victim to be informed on the horrible person that did the crime? I naturally would just assume if anything happens to this worthless fuck that killed my mom, they will kindly let me know. You know what I mean? But I guess there's like a million fucking hoops that you should have to go through just to be informed when someone goes up for parole that did something horrible to someone that you love and care about. Blows my mind. And the lady even got irritated. She's like, no, bro. Like I told you, I didn't, no one told me to do that. And he's like, oh, well, you coulda, shoulda, woulda. And it pisses me off when that happens. It makes me very, very mad. Um, So their victims are May Mason she was 79 years old. Edith Cole, who was 89 years old. Marguerite Chambers, or Marguerite, I'm not sure. Marguerite, Marguerite Chambers, who was 60 years old. Um, mm, Myrtle Lance, who was 95 years old. And Bella Burkhard, who was 74. And this horrible woman, well, I guess, yeah, I'll say she's horrible because even if you were just a lookout while your quote unquote crazy sexual to craved lover smothered these women, you still didn't say shit. And you only told your ex-husband to be a fucking dick. Like that's the only reason you even told him was to be like, ha ha, I got my fucking twat ate out while we fucking killed old people and you sat here and raised our kid and did nothing. That's all you did it for. You didn't do it to be like, oh, I feel so bad about these people. I did a horrible thing. When you were just like, oh, here, make you jealous. Like, ugh. And like how she did it, she's like, what was the worst, what's the worst possible thing you could ever think of a person doing? Like she made it like a game, even with him, even in telling him, she was like, what could you think I was capable of doing? Obviously, if I was that man, I'd be like being a crazy bitch, obviously. She was released from prison on January 16th, 2020. Um, she was released to South Carolina um, to live with relatives. So um, there was a book done that's called I Love You Forever in Five Days. And in that book, there are interviews done with the family, co-workers, friends of the victims and them through their entire lives. It covers the story trials that they went through the trial itself and their experiences with all of that stuff and so if you want to like I said it's called I love you forever in five days um so everybody it's really a toss-up so 
the book portrays Wood as a psychopath, a criminal mastermind, and a manipulator, and that she only did it to punish Gwen for leaving her. And that a psychologist testified that Gwen was very easy manipulative and suffered from borderline personality. And so there's just like a whole bunch of things. And Kathy herself writes the book, is in the book giving interviews, okay? And she told two inmates that she made up the whole story to put Gwen away for her whole life so that she would ha wouldn't be able to like love another person. So, and the other thing that she told people is that she did the killings all by herself and just framed Gwen and did it all for revenge. So, like, simply just, she just did it to do it. And that's honestly, like, I'm sorry, but when Kathy and everybody goes out and writes all these books and all this nonsense, right? And everybody's like, Oh, and Kathy's like, oh, this is what I said. To people who were she was locked up with, okay, and these are women that you obviously get some time with because she did like 30-something years before she was released. So she did do a good amount of time. Obviously not enough because she should be in prison for life. But like, I don't even, when you do, like that shit should be, I don't know, used against you. If like you tell inmates, like other inmates that, and to think that if you're going to put your lesbian lover away forever, why the fuck would you lock her up in a prison full of women? Like, did you really think that she'd turn into a nun? I'm sorry. I've seen Orange is the New Black and I know what y'all do in prison. I've seen it. Or Wentworth. Ooh. If you guys like literally a good show. Because like the episode's done. If you guys don't want to listen to the banter. Turn it off. Um, anyway. Um, if you guys want to watch a really good show. And you liked Orange is the New Black. I shit you not. Wentworth is like the hardcore version of Orange is the New Black. I think like in the first like 5-10 minutes of it. It's like this crazy prison rape scene going on it's a damn good show damn good but it is not cute like orange is the new black and so but yeah you guys these guys were literally on just like a clip a little moment of this killer documentary and it was like lovers especially like these two bitches over here in this old folks home that killed bitches and they did it in a love pact and my mouth dropped open. Do you know how mad I would be? The families did sue this place because I would have too. Trust and fucking believe I would have too. This is horrible. It did go out of business too, by the way, I should say. It's no longer immersed. Anyway. Sorry, my door was just opened, so that was why the awkward pause happened. Anywho, so yeah, it's not even an old folks' home anymore. It's a building, it's now called something of St. Mary's. So, the families would have, I, they sued. I would have sued too. I'm not sure if they won or not, but like, I'm assuming they did, because if they didn't, that's just unjust, because obviously... They did not put their family members there to be murdered in some lesbian fucking love game. And like, you ruin the trust. Oh my God. Can you just forever and always that family is going to be like, no, mom, I cannot put you in a home generations forevermore because Great, 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 great grandma, even though it's not that far down the line yet, but like great grandma was fucking killed over a goddamn lesbian love game. All she was doing was sleeping. Oh God, I fucking hate this stuff. If your job is to take care of somebody and like you are given the power and the control and the ability to do so, do so. You're not hired to do whatever the hell you want to do. Oh my God. 
goodness. And no, I'm not knocking them because they're lesbian lovers. I'm not doing that at all because like I've said a million fucking times, I love the gays. Love, love, love. All of them. Gays, lesbians, everybody. Love them. One of my bestest, dearest friends, her name is Brittany. I've talked about her a million times. Is my favorite lesbian of all time. Like literally my favorite person. And the guy who took all my maternity pictures is gay. So like, you know what I mean? Hey, I love him. So don't ever say I'm doing it because I hate him. I'm just saying these two lesbians was out there. God damn mind. I don't even know if we can call Kathy a lesbian. Gwen was, but I don't know if we can call Kathy one. Because she stopped. But then started. I don't know. According to the L word, you can. I don't know. I'm just saying she's fucked off and it's fucked up that Kathy is free and Gwen's not just saying, especially when Gwen didn't punk out and take a deal. You know what I mean? Like that shows a lot about a person. I'm just saying if you're in jail and she never took her chance to get rich off of it. You, I don't know guys. It just, I don't know. I don't know. I do know, obviously, obviously, but that's the story of the angels of death. I don't think they're angels of death. They're more like devils of death. They're the devils of death. Horrible women. Well, I'm guess Kathy. Welcome to 2020. <laughs> Not a good year, but I don't know. We'll see what she does. But I agree with the families at her court hearing, at her like little parole hearing, any death that happens around Kathy is going to be a very, very looked into death. And hopefully all the, no one is a victim of Kathy, I hope. But I've watched enough and watched her enough. And that's the thing too, is don't hate on me and like stick up for Kathy. I've watched all of like the police interviews and all of that shit. And she literally just rubs me very, very wrong. Like I do not get a good vibe, not a chill vibe from her. And she was like that in her workplace too. So she always was like stirring the pot and trying to fuck everybody's lives over. Ugh. Makes me so mad. But yeah, so that's Tuesday's episode. All right. Have a good week. I will see you on Tuesday. And that just means we're closer to my 30th birthday. Screech. I'm going to be 30. Gross. All right. I love all of you. Follow me on Facebook at It Is What It Is, a true crime podcast on YouTube. It is what it is, a true crime podcast and on Instagram at it is what it is pod 19 altogether, no spaces. And on Twitter at it is what it is 208 because that's where I'm from. And so, oh, and Kenny, you're on Tuesday, my dear. Have a good week, guys. Bye.